Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. As always, John, great to see you and our audience. How are you guys doing out there? Uh, I, can I answer for our audience? Yeah, please. <laughs> please. We're doing great. We're Wait, doing great. Because did I hear, did I hear a voice in the background? The day, today's the day we talk to Michelle Fabrica. That's always a great day, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> exactly. How are you doing, Michelle? I'm good. How are you doing? Michelle, you are a busy lady. You help people with all kinds of problems in their lives, uh, lives, relationships, love uh, issues, and things like that. What's trending with you? I, that, that's probably a bad way to put it, but what, what, <laughs> what seems to be a, a common problem that you're dealing with these days with people? Yeah, well, I really want to talk about money. You know, financial stress is is one of those top uh, relationship stressors. Oh, and boy, um, ever, yeah. I think it's good to address that one. Sometimes it's one part, usually it's one partner or the other who's, you know, one person spends a little more, one is a little more frugal. And, you know, we don't always, we're not always on the same page there. But it's probably, it's, that's always been the age old problem. It's probably exacerbated, especially when uh, people may be facing reduced family incomes and things like that. Uh, sure. Yeah. You know, I heard a, a statistic, that, and I, I maybe I, I assume it's true, um, that financial problems are the most common reason for divorce among couples. Um, so you're right. I've, I've, no two people look at money the same way, and uh, everybody, every couple deals with it differently. But what seems to be the most common friction uh, of with finance and, and spending habits? Well, really, it's about one person spending, you know, more, a little more, a lot more than the other. And, you know, uh, the tension around that because they're worried about the future. One of them is worried about the future and we got to spend less. The other one's like, you know, maybe not worried about that. And um, or maybe there's actually not really a problem, but, you know, one person thinks there is. And so then then there's like a control starting to happen between the, you know, one person trying to get them to stop. And. It just, yeah, creates tension. So, I mean, the first thing really to look at in this situation is for um, if, you know, if you're concerned about your partner's spending habits is to really be honest with yourself. Is it really their financial health or, or the, the financial health of the two of you that you're worried about? Or is it just you don't like what they're spending money on? Are you just, you know, is it like a, your own control issue or is it something that they're actually, um, you know, putting the, the, the fam your family at risk in some way? And, um, and the other thing, too, is, like, is there really a problem? Like, do you actually know, you know, what is going on? Because some people just, you know, you have the illusion or the assumption, oh, I think it's bad, but you don't really know. So you need to look, you know, look at those numbers, too. Yeah. So it, seems you know, to me, it seems to me that um, uh, this just creeps up and it happens uh, uh, in, uh, in, when couples get married. Uh, both John and I uh, have both been married over 50 years uh, each. Uh, between the two of us, we when did we celebrate our 100th anniversary, John? <laughs> but um, uh, it seems well, to me- Well, whenever it was, Art, whenever it oh, was, happy, I forgot it. Oh, uh, well, I have a card, <laughs> but I, I forgot to send it as well. But uh, it seems that uh, there's um, uh, maybe the opportunity to set things up. It's already too late when, when you think there's a problem. But uh, like uh, maybe having, uh, I know a lot of couples set up separate checking accounts or uh, they may have a lot of joint stuff, but then each one has a, a credit card only in their own name for mad money or something. Uh, but we're beyond that point. Now we're a couple that would have a period of time they've been together. What's the best way to bring this up? Yeah, well, like I said, first to just get really a little clear about what exactly is the problem and, you know, is it, is it me, is it them, you know, just in terms of, you don't know yet until you actually bring it up. So the key is that just to get a little settled and, you know, you're not taking the high road and they're, you're not right and they're wrong, right? We're not trying to get into a blame game here. We really want to avoid, you know, judgment of the other. You know, you might think that, oh, well, my way is better to spend less or they're too tight with money, you know, whatever. Those aren't helpful, right? We want to be, we're coming together. We're a team. So really you wanna do it with love and you want to, um, you know, maybe bring it up like, you know, I think it'd be a good idea if we start, um, you know, tracking our finances. What do you think of that? And just sort of throw it out as a, as a question to, um, to look at together. 
Yeah, you know, in terms of uh, finance, it, it it's really not that difficult. Technically, it's 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 a uh, math. You know, you you got so much coming in, so much going out. You, you make a budget, but the problem isn't the money. The problem isn't the math. The problem is always the human dynamic uh, of I want it this way, you want it that way. Why are you buying all that? We agreed upon this, or I thought we did. You know that kind of thing. Right. It, it really is a relationship problem, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And this is where obviously communication, you know, is really key into, you know, keeping this, uh, you know, as smooth as possible. And sometimes it's good to get, you know, external help, either a coach or therapist or a financial advisor who can give you the uh, objective, you know, expert opinion on about how, how are your finances really doing. And, um, and Art, you mentioned this, to, sometimes like couples decide, you know, it's different if you've been together, you know, a really long time, like the two of you have, but if you're a new family together and you have maybe, you know, expenses that are related to your adult children. And so it's definitely more complicated. Maybe your maybe your spending isn't even commingled at all. You're not even, I shouldn't even use that word. It's not related to this divorce, whatever. Um, you know, maybe your money is separate, but you still have, jo you know, joint expenses. So it's like, how are you really doing things? And um, you need to be clear on who's contributing to what, you know, uh, of the general household costs and how and how much. And um, is there going to be enough, you know? Yeah. And I, I really like your approach with love because that's what gets lost mm -hmm. <laughs> very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, and I think what happens if these things come up, uh, they probably have an incendiary uh, component to it, either by the person who's going to bring it up or the person it gets brought up to. So even though probably because uh, we don't we don't particularly have these issues, uh, uh, John and I are not facing these kind of issues. Uh, it seems that in order to best get through this, it might be best to have like either a ad financial advisor or third party uh, who is not on one side or the other to help work through uh, these things. Because even if there is enough money, it just may be the perception that each one has. That means they need a love or relationship coach. Uh, is the other person spending too much money? That's one thing as opposed to do we have enough money and how do we expand it and then so there, there are two different potential issues. One is financially, can we handle stuff? But the other one is, like you said, uh, I don't like what you're spending. You're not saying it, but you're spending it on that. I get to spend my money on golf, but you don't get to spend your... I don't play golf, by the way. <laughs> right, but, right. But I'm, I'm tired of you spending all your money on something else, which yeah. is something you want. And th that's a resentment thing, which probably is a re more relationship than it is a money thing. Right, right. I like the way you kind of tease them apart there. Yeah, because I think it can be good to, you know, if you do decide to, um, you know, have some separate money for each of you, and if you already have that, many couples do, it's sort of like, you know, this is how much we each get to spend each month, let's, let's say, the discretionary spending. It's like, it's not the amount, you, you agree to the amount, but how you each spend it is up to you. So we're not like, you know, oh, here's your money and here's how much you can spend on this and that, you know, it's like, whoa, 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 you know, we're adults here, right? So it's really important to just, you know, f find an amount that you both feel comfortable with and then you're free. Then you have the freedom with that money. So I think it, that can go better often. You know, um, that we're talking about, I think, a relatively normal case between couples uh, that have different personalities, different spending habits, different likes and wants and whatever. But every once in a while, you do hear about somebody who is a has a real psychological issue with spending, um, a real problem, uh, somebody who, um, like a gambler or something. Um, right, right. And, and cannot, they're a shopaholic or they cannot get, you know, enough. And they are, it, it, it is an outsized problem that's not typical. How does one deal with somebody who has really gone to the extreme um, of, of spending your, your family's money? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that I would say that's almost beyond the scope of where, you know, where I would be working with someone. I really would, they might need, your partner might need professional help if they have like kind of a, you know, addictive kind of spending habit, whatever. And also just financially to get some support around 
making sure that you know you protect the assets that you have together. Maybe it's time to just divide them in half at that point, so at least you know you're you're protected because you know if, if a couple is married, they they have um, you know joint responsibility for for debt that is in, in, incurred during the marriage. So so really gets it, it's it's. It's pretty challenging. That's a pretty challenging situation. However, it needs attention. So that's, you know, it's time to get involved at that point. Yeah. yeah. Well, all of these, uh, whether it's a more common situation or something extreme like that, they all need attention. We can't just let these things fester. Mm -hmm. Right, so. right. Yeah. And it's good right. to just make sure, sorry, one quick thing, to just, you know, it's good to have the direct conversation rather than the little digs and the nags because that doesn't go well. So just, yeah, have a little financial yep. visit <laughs> and uh, talk about these things. Good advice. Good advice. Okay. Michelle, thank you. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Sounds great. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.